everybody, so we got a fun review today as we're talking Season 4 of Harley Quinn. Easily by far one of my favorite shows to cover on the channel, despite the fact that this is now the third streaming service I've covered this series on. DC Universe, HBO Max, and now Max, which is pretty crazy to me. Just to let you guys know, for full disclosure, I have seen all of Season 4 at this point, because Max sent it over early. A huge thank you to them for letting me screen it early. And because of that, I am giving my overarching thoughts of the entire Season 4, but it is still going to be spoiled free because if you're new to the channel I do week by week breakdowns of every single episode I did it with season two I did it with season three so if that's something that interests you if you want to talk about Harley Quinn on the channel as every episode drops make sure you stick around leave a like and subscribe Given where we left things off at the tail end of Season 3 with Ivy joining the Legion of Doom while Harley joins the Bat Family, you can only imagine the wild escapades that we have in store for Season 4. And this season at large still has your staples of the franchise, its unique brand of over-the-top, raunchy, hilarious humor and style. And yet this show still finds interesting ways to evolve and push the envelope on what they can get away with comedically. One of the biggest reasons why Season 4 is so fantastic is the decision to have Harley join the Bat Family. It presents a plethora of amazing possibilities all throughout Season 4. You witness her become a hero, fight alongside the Bat Family. She even gets her own fantastic Bat-themed Harley Quinn costume, which I love the design of because it very much evokes the themes of Harley Quinn while also being a really cool Bat costume. But at the same time, she's Harley Quinn. She is not used to being a heroic figure, so there are a lot of growing pains throughout Season 4 when you see her going on these missions with the Bat Family. She kind of breaks the rules, for lack of a better term, when it comes to what the Bat Family stands for, which leads to some pretty hilarious moments. Now, I am a little bit biased because I do love the Bat Family at large, but their inclusion in Season 4 just adds another great layer to the story and the jokes at large. Some of the jokes in the show I laugh the hardest that involve the Bat Family in some shape or form, mainly Nightwing, because there are so many different jokes sprinkled throughout Season 4 that poke fun at the fact that Nightwing has a giant ass. At times, it almost felt like the writers were trying their hardest to make the jokes funnier and funnier each time they reference Nightwing having a huge ass, and I love that about the show. As you can imagine with Harley joining the Bat family while Ivy is leading the Legion of Doom, it causes a major conflict of interest all throughout Season 4. Taking up the bulk of the screen time whenever they are on screen together between their romantic interactions where they basically pretty much have to sneak around behind everyone's back the entire season. And you have this struggle between the both of them trying to balance their work life with their love life since they're technically on opposite sides, one being a hero and one being a villain. All this adds interesting different types of layers to explore with in their relationship and probably is their biggest test as a couple so far. Ivy's arc with the Legion of Doom also is pretty great in its own right and how she clashes with Lex Luthor the entire time. But gradually, over the course of the season, you get to see her try and win over these crazy supervillains, whether they're going to these supervillain conventions on the moon or befriending other women supervillains like Talia al Ghul. The way that Ivy's story evolves over the course of season four is very compelling to watch and it's filled with a lot of big surprises, whether it be just within the story or the big surprises as far as DC characters, especially super villains. I mean, we get Steppenwolf, Rilla Grodd, Talia al Ghul, like I just mentioned, and some other ones that are kind of deep cuts, like Professor Pig or Snowflame, a Legion of Doom member that gets his powers from snorting cocaine, which feels very perfect for a show like Harley Quinn. Even four seasons into Harley Quinn, the show still finds a way to have big, elaborate surprises. I would say this season probably has some of the biggest surprises so far, predominantly in the latter half of the season. There's one big surprise that I don't want to give away, of course, but I will say there is one big shocking moment that kind of turns the tides of the entire season about halfway through season four. Something that even shocked me that they were able to get away with it and it could be seen as controversial for DC fans at large. An unfortunate thing for me as a longtime fan of the show, and I'm sure other people will feel the same way, is given the fact that we are putting Ivy and Harley into new teams, the old former team members, they're not really given a whole lot to do in season four. They try their best to incorporate all of them, including Joker, even though I don't consider him part of any team. They're sprinkled throughout season four, but there's nothing substantial to a large part of what they got going on. Every now and then you'll get an exchange between Ivy and Frank, and King Shark probably has the most plot progression just because every now and then he'll pop up because he has this journey he's going on with his wife. One of my personal favorites, Bane, pops in from time to time to have one great joke here or there pretty much almost in every episode. 
But don't expect a lot from those characters or Clayface or Dr. Psycho. It very much is a Harley and Ivy centered story in season four. Overall, season four of Harley Quinn is yet another epic season of this series. The evolution of this show continues to be brilliant, showcasing another fun chapter with Harley, Ivy, and company that's outrageous in all the best ways. At this point in time, I don't think you're really trying to win over new audiences to the show, but if you're trying to cater to that audience that's already baked into the show that are big fans after all these seasons on different streaming services i think that core audience is going to continue to love what they have in store for season four and i hopefully we get a season five because you never really know with the ever-changing story behind all these different streaming services that harley quinn is on like i said earlier on more than likely i'm going to do episode by episode breakdowns of every single episode as they drop on max much like i did with season two of harley quinn and season three so if that interests you make sure you stay tuned for that on the channel in the upcoming future but thank you guys as always check out videos i always do appreciate it make sure you like on the video and also subscribe to the channel so they reviews reactions unboxings and more the next time i'll see you guys later